Yeah, yeah. Hey, welcome back to the uh, Santa Max Devil's Playhouse commentary. This is for the second episode. I'm Chuck Jordan, season designer. I'm Andy Hartzell. Um, I wrote this episode and designed it along with uh, Brendan Ferguson. This has been witnessed to uh, many Dave Bogan, apparently, I direct this episode. So <laughs> Dennis Lennart, lead cinematic artist. And Eric Carson, also a cinematic artist. So I was... Uh, I was kind of nervous going into this project because partly because I, I don't think I was familiar with like, any of the pop culture detritus that was the um, that, that that was the inspiration for it, um, and uh, I know the original uh, plot was was much different and was mostly set in the in the present and uh, and had only one act that was uh, with Sam and Max's great grandparents in the past. But then I remember one one day during the design process, uh, Chuck said, "Which part are you most?" Excited about it, and I said uh, the part, the part that said in the past, and so he was like, "All right, make the let's make the whole let's make the whole uh, episode about that." Um, and and from then on, it got really it got uh, really exciting. It turned out to be like probably my, my most favorite project I have worked on. Uh, on here, on, um, for the record, that sounds that makes it sound like I had more to do with it than I really did. <laughs> <laughs> it was all uh, Andy and Brendan coming up with a train idea, and the uh, uh -huh. the whole murder on the Orient Express angle was just genius. Yeah, that was that was the thing that got us going. And originally, it, it was like all of the all of the, the, the Lincoln was going to be there, and 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 Bosco and Mama Bosco's ancestors who were emigrating from the old country with their chicken and their cow, and and every every possible character we could get into the train. It was going to be a packed train, and of course, that didn't quite happen. But we we wound up with the um, with. Uh, the essential characters, and you know, some some characters that from past seasons that people were uh, surprised to see again, which was fun. Also, the, the this whole business of um, uh, of playing the game out of order and and and, and switching between reels was uh, kind of like about a week into the design. Uh, there was this uh, just you know, this is the 13th episode of Sam and Max. It's it, we've got to do something weird and different in order to. Um, that, that will either completely fail or or be something that people will talk about and and um, and once we had that in place, then then it all sort of clicked and from then on it was um, it's a lot of fun to to work on. Got to give quick quick props to Eric for uh, figuring all this stuff out, how to do the whole movie on the wall thing. <clears throat> when he he was actually on the project for you about mean the two thing months. That broke the tool. Yeah, well, you know, there's that too. <laughs> we ran out of notes. <laughs> It was awesome, though. That could have been the 50 scorpions the interns put in. It may have been that. The, uh, yeah, but he was on uh, He was on way earlier than all of us. We were still on episode one for a long time, and it was just Eric sort of <laughs> starting the game. I just started this project like a month early, and nobody came and bothered me. It was great. Yeah, and there's a lot of <laughs> just crossing our fingers and hoping that we'd be able to do this uh, business of going in and out of the, of the frame and and, um, and he pulled it off. Yeah, I think it, it looks really nice. And yes, we did almost break the engine in the process. We ended up having to do a lot of last minute band-aid emergency stuff to actually get it to run. And uh, um, we did, so that's the good part. That was now part of this was just the, the huge size of our uh, our tomb was 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 enormous and and really cool and and that was actually our our great illustrious leader Kevin Bruner who who came in at a certain point and said we got to do something here that we couldn't have done we got to do an environment that we could not have done in previous seasons let's give it levels let's make it feel really uh, you know uh, r really big and uh, uh, Drew Di Domenico. Built uh, this this enormous uh, tomb that that was a lot of fun to explore. And Eric had to. I believe. What's that? I believe oh yeah, that's right. He did too. Yeah. Did the usher see us? 
he's still fishing. It's one of the harder things to do to, to design a giant space like that. To, you got to keep texture reuse in mind and all that kind of stuff. And how do you fill it up with enough interesting detail and, and dirt and spit and polish to make it look good uh, while dealing with that size and you know, limitations? And I think they did a pretty good job. I'll tell you how. 50 scorpions. That's 50 how you do it. <laughs> that got cut out. <laughs> Now, Monsieur Paperweight here, is, uh, his design is based on uh, our own uh, marketing uh, uh, czar, Joel. And, uh, visually. Just visually. No. Just, just visually, yeah. He's not <laughs> as evil as, as Paperweight. Uh, but um, th that was also a very early decision. It was like, uh, he's, he's got to look like Joel. He can't look like anyone else. And we didn't, we didn't tell Joel we were designing a character based on him. We, we had... Initially, he wasn't very happy. It looked like... <laughs> but he warmed up to it. We, now it's we on had, his business card. <laughs> yeah, he, made, really? he made the paperweight <laughs> face. That's his favorite character. Yeah. He dressed up as him for Halloween afterwards. Yeah, he did. I think yeah. before he played the game, he just saw the concept. He was the yeah, player. well, there was this moment where we had him all cut. Ryan had concepted him out. He had snuck peeks at him. We'd, we'd like, call him over and point at Joel through, you know, when, when Joel was in meetings, when you could get a good profile of him. And uh, our producer, Franklin, at a certain point said, you know, we can't, we, we've got to show this to him. And and, uh, and so we, we, we called him over, and there were a bunch of people sort of hovering around. And he said, what do you think of... Uh, what do you think of this uh, this character? And Joel was like, uh, well, it kind of looks like a kind of a Peter Lorre type character. And he said, does it remind you of anyone else? And Joel kind of looked at it and then just kind of went, oh, no. <laughs> and Joel's got one of those looks on his faces where you can't tell if he's like, yeah, yeah, that looks good. Or if it's, I can't believe you just did that. I'm going to kill you in your sleep. Yeah. Ah. Uh, our mole woman, Melissa Carey, uh, she is a... Uh, I love her. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like this character, too. And we, all of our female characters, we have, we have three female characters, which is a huge amount of female characters for Sam and Max. And they were, um, they, they all were really, really hard to cast, and we wound up going with people that we had, had not really used before. Melissa Carey is a theater actress from... Uh, from the city, from San Francisco, who had been in a show with my partner, and, and uh, I just kind of dragged her in to, to audition because we couldn't find someone who could do that gypsy accent. She did a great job. This is a good example of trying to get our scenes to feel a little bit more dynamic with the, the camera shake, the constant camera shake like you're on a train, and getting that claustrophobic uh, train car feel with without ruining the playability of the space. It was a pretty good challenge. Yeah, there were a lot of challenges in this in, in this <laughs> game as far as um, camera angles and, and playability. And the, the train was definitely hard. Uh, I think it's really nice contrast between the, the two with so much open space and the shots with just so much air behind it compared to the super claustrophobic train car. Yeah. Nice so to have them side by side. It's definitely what we were hoping for. This Thessaly Lerner with her little chipmunk voice. We were originally we were looking for a, 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 um, a Catherine Hepburn uh, talk alike. And again, we, we auditioned all kinds of people, and no one could quite do a young Catherine Hepburn. But then she, this Thessaly Lerner, who has this natural kind of chipmunk voice, and, and gave it a little bit of an East Coast. Uh, draw and, and she was be quiet. perfect. And well, they uh, when Amelia Hart was in uh, season two, they did just basically a Catherine Hepburn version of Catherine Hepburn, and I think this does a pretty good, uh, you know, her younger. I think it comes through. Yeah. With girlish timidity, Maximus. Isn't that? It's my psychic aura. It's acting up again, Samith. All right, so someone's face. Right. What's going on? Oh, this is this is okay. Is that is that your? Uh, is this your chore? Or is yeah. This the, yeah, yeah. I love the uh, the, the the whole wide angle. <laughs> what do you call that again? The Zolly. Zolly. The Zolly. Zolly. Yeah. The pull focus. Yeah. Yeah. Zoom in a doll. Yeah. Zoom in a doll. Yeah. Used <laughs> sparingly in episode one <laughs> of Sam Max. Or anywhere. This is what, Roger Jackson, I believe. That guy's doing it, doing his Lionel Barrymore from "You Can't Take It With You." That's what what uh, I said. Yeah, do Lionel Barrymore from "You Can't Take It With You," and he immediately started rattling off lines from the movie. So that's great. <clears throat> I think we could do. We keep threatening to do an entire game with just Andrew Chaikin and uh, 
Roger Jackson. <laughs> uh, awesome. I think we could do it. <laughs> I think it could be done. <laughs> Whoa. Hey. Our our two D sequence. Uh, and and there we go. which was also uh, one of the one of the first ideas we, we had. We really we, we I was I was really thrilled with how well uh, the, the, the whole two D thing was managed. I mean, it, it it really does look like they're on the wall. Cucumber lengthwise. And what this is where they uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the cucumber cut lengthwise the the, uh, the classic mole humor, which uh, is now part of the popular lexicon. And there's our third female character, Rebecca Schweitzer, as the the mole girl with the lateral lisp. Nailed that. Is because uh, I, I remember thinking. Oh, when they're casting that, I really, you need to find somebody who remembers to do the whole braces list. Mm -hmm. And I heard the audition, I was like, dang, these people are good. <laughs> Although the character didn't actually have braces until after she, uh, after she, uh, after we, we, she did the voice. Uh, oh, it's and essential. Like, oh, she's got to have braces. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> it's just like Marsha Brady. Yeah. Talking about Desi Arnaz Jr. You my I think it was, yeah, it was Marsha. Survive. Or the girl in or Finding Joan, Nemo. Uh, <laughs> Joan, Joan Cusack. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, the cow. The cow. Yes. The cow returns. <laughs> I still support the original version of that puzzle, but I can understand yeah. why it was changed. Ah, yes, the male lactation <laughs> puzzle. <laughs> that didn't yeah. quite make it. <laughs> there's a. There's a. There's a. Yeah. The, no, uh, he just refused to, to <laughs> chore <laughs> that the male lactation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. There's, there's <laughs> strong opinions back. We should have a video game tournament with uh, <laughs> pro male lactation and, and uh, against the male lactation. <laughs> Just that we support it, not suffer from it. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, vampire slushy. Blood. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah, got blood. He needed something. Pick up me blood. Is uh, does that give you a? Uh, yes, RB. It's mm. time to ask. No, it's, it's not blood. It's <laughs> just <laughs> it's cool. <-Aid. laughs> Less than uh, male lactation, though. Nail so polish. <laughs> yeah. Nothing standing between us and that toy box, but air. Come on, buddy. Let's go get it. Uh, this <laughs> is a little piece of animation that was, was worked on for a long time. I think this is where time. we came in. I'm experiencing a newfound sense of respect for our forebears, Sam. I mean, Sam. So we've kind of wound our way back to the beginning, or no, we finished real did manage to produce a three of four. Two of four. Whatever. You were talking about that animation taking a long time to do, and I think part of it was we needed to reuse that pose for the skeletons at the beginning and the end. And it, uh, once they turned into skeletons, the pose wasn't as strong as so it really got lost. And I think that got a, a little bit of a rework for that reason, too. This scene or I might what be making that up completely. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds cool. There was someone at least talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> An email went out somewhere. Don't trust me. <laughs> now this scene got uh, truncated. It was originally much longer. Involved all the characters in the train running, running down and interacting and fighting. And uh, part of the part of our final scoping process, we cut it down. But we realized we'd cut uh, an essential. Um, um, moment that explained why Sam and, uh, Samoth and Maximus were uh, enchanted at that time. So there was a lot of uh, how do we how do we explain that? How do we rig back in the moment where they get where they get cursed by by Mole Dad? And we, we, we finally came up with something that kind of compromised that everyone. I think could. Max did something really bad to Mole Dad. Mole Dad was just way in the background, kind of. He, I think he was trying to he's trying to curse Jurgen, and it's bouncing. It's it's it missing Jurgen. And it's hitting Sam and Max. And here they are, ladies and gentlemen. And now we're in Fresh the final the demonic part of the game, or the most demonic part of the game. This was Maius. Maius's last name? Uh, 
uh, uh, Fietzik. <laughs> this was his, his, uh, our, the Germans. Our German, our German guy's big uh, f first, uh, first chance to do a scene all on his own, and he did this. He did it. It was beautifully, incredibly yeah. paced, dramatic, climactic scene um, that uh, made us all very happy. Yeah, yeah. We should definitely mention uh, Myas and Torsten came in um, to intern, intern from six, six months from Germany, and uh, they straight from Jurgen's castle. Straight from Jurgen's. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. That's right. And uh, on episode one, we started them off just doing like little sort of random rats and pigeons and stuff in the background, and they ended up giving all these little story moments to rats on bottles and little fights going on and just random things and West Side Story as told by rats and pigeons <laughs> in New York. Exactly. So uh, we were so impressed by those that we said, let's give them cutscenes for episode two. <laughs> and it worked. If you refuse yeah, they did a great job. Yeah. And made up for the fact that Dennis was continually denied to us for far too long. <laughs> yeah. There was like two months where pretty much every day Andy would come in and go, so uh, when are you starting on episode two? And it was always, uh, maybe this afternoon. Maybe this afternoon. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> and then more through, or episode one, fixes would come in. Previous doll in history. Yes. Uh -oh. As soon as you see a ventriloquist doll, you know, they're going to go, hey, it's going to turn evil. So I was impressed. Uh, they managed to make it clear that it was, uh, or make it feel like an inanimate toy. That was until later. Until we ultimately succumb to the cliché. <laughs> yeah, well, there were, were people on the forum. You're just trying to hold out the cliché as long as possible. We appreciate you thinking of us, but we don't do that old world. No, I think most people just thought anymore. it was a toy. That's good. Nice you fooled them. And if Nefertiti's going to school. Dad, yeah, I told you, it isn't Nefertiti anymore. Our mole person story. Originally, though, there were a lot of characters in this in this episode, more than we really should have been able to get away with. A lot of new characters. Yeah, and part of it was like these moles were all sold as they look exactly alike, they dress exactly alike, that they're really only one character. And then as the voices came in and as the characters, the, the, each of them was a completely distinct personality, we, we just kept kind of forced, they, 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 they evolved. There's a little salad dressing on them. Lessons in how to sneak things by producers. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> We'll but they're all wearing the back. same identical smiley face, so they're yeah. for all you know, intents and purposes the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this this episode is insane with like characters and environments. There's just a plethora. We compromise. Yeah, will open an office in the building, which is good. People yeah. dug it. Yeah, in a way, this is the this was the episode that. And we're gonna have three train cars, but it's really only one train car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the train cars all feel like the same thing. We gotta make them different. Yeah, yeah they're all different colors and they're lit yeah. different. <laughs> of course they have to. I, I, when the the concepts were all pinned to the the bulletin board, I remember there was a morning when when Sean Bannerman was uh, just just looking at at it and he just said, "How how did you get away with this? How how do you get so many uh, environments?" And uh, I don't know how we did it. Whoa, that was cool. I never seen that before. Yeah. You <laughs> know. And uh, that that was that actually made uh, people sad. The characters they had been playing for an entire episode just died. I think Mike Peretta did a real great job on effects mm -hmm. throughout the season and each episode just got better and better and more complex. Four motoring reels of film and one they never come back to life. Or do they? <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next time. <laughs> this th this whole thing went through a couple of versions too, didn't it? Yes, it did. We're Cutting kind of some dialogue and changing some staging. And yeah, just to, to make that final cliffhanger really, really work, really sell. That took longer than expected. The restroom in the train station was closed, so I had to pay. Originally, we had had that as the very last thing that you see in the game. I think at one point. Well, originally it was going to go back to the narrator, and he was going to he was going to finish the episode. And uh, you and, and, and Franklin and other people really argued for now the final. We were the final mean image. About it. They were terribly <laughs> mean. That I, you know, I, I cried a little bit, and then I agreed with them, and they were right. What's wrong with you, little buddy? I think um, 
and it was. You know, we really felt that the, the lasting image we wanted to leave with the player was Max's brain is gone uh, to really tie it together to the next episode. And that's why that whole thing happened, I think. Yeah. Pretty strong image. Yeah. Yeah. I love Especially that. this part. Yeah. The weight <laughs> of the skull is just so, <laughs> so real. <laughs> and that's it. What happens? Thanks for being with us. <laughs>